Good morning, I'm Dan Owen, and this is Passage Attack. Today our focus verse is 1 Peter 3.15. But let's do a little work in the context of the book, first of all. Peter was writing to a group of uh, Christians scattered around the bottom of the Black Sea and in Turkey, and um, this was an area where there were almost no Christians, and the Christians that existed there were uh, the minority, and people thought they were strange. <clears throat> so, a good passage to set the context here is uh, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 11 and 12, because in that passage, he has an exhortation for these people that is pretty thematic in the entire book. He's talking to the Christians who are this misunderstood minority in the provinces around the Black Sea. It says, Beloved, I urge you as sojourners and exiles to abstain from the passions of the flesh which war against your soul. Then he says, Keep your conduct among the Gentiles honorable. This is a major theme in the book of 1 Peter, the idea of the strongest thing you have going for you is your conduct so people can observe what Christians are really about. He says, keep your conduct among the Gentiles honorable so that when they speak against you as evildoers, and this is because they didn't understand Christians, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day of visitation. The word conduct or behavior is key in the book of 1 Peter because the way to make an inroad in a place where there's no Christians and to explain what Christians are is by the way your life and your lifestyle affects other people. Now let's go over to the immediate context of our passage in 1 Peter chapter 3, starting in verse 9. And Peter again uh, talks to them about doing evil as opposed to doing good. First, let's look at where he talks about doing evil. Do not repay evil for evil. Do not repay reviling for reviling. See, that's hateful talk. Drop down to verse uh, 10. Whoever desires to love life and see good days, let him keep his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking deceit. See, that's a lot like this reviling up above. Turn away from evil. Uh, down at the end of this uh, quotation from the Old Testament, the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. So much like in chapter 2, verse 11 and 12, he says, at all costs, Christians, you've got to avoid doing evil and being seen to do evil. But the contrast is, instead of hateful talk and repaying evil, he says, on the contrary, bless. In other words, we're going to see this different attitude in Christians. Do good, he says, which is the same thing he said in chapter 2 and verse 12. Seek peace and pursue it. See, this is the conduct of the Christian. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous. See, those people that do right. So the basic message here is, in this hostile environment where nobody understands Christians, everybody is suspect of Christians, You've got to let your light shine in doing good and not be guilty of doing evil in front of this populace which all, uh, already doesn't trust Christians. He continues this theme in building up to our passage. He says, Who is going to harm you if you are zealous for what is good? Same theme. But even if you should suffer for righteousness sake, that is because you're doing good, see, you will be blessed. Honor Christ as Lord, and honor in your hearts Christ as Lord, always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason of the hope that is in you, yet do it, and this gets back to conduct, with gentleness and respect, having a good conscience, so that when you are slandered, those who revile your good behavior in Christ may be put to shame. Now, notice how similar this is to chapter 2, verse 12, where he says it's by your good behavior that you'll put to silence those who would speak against you. Now, we come to our 
theme verse here, the focus of our discussion today, and that is 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15. People out in the world who are not Christians and don't understand Christians need answers. They want to know why we are Christians and why we want them to become Christians. So in speaking to this persecuted minority of Christians, Peter says, But in your hearts honor Christ the Lord as holy, always being prepared to give a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. See, why are you a Christian? All right, now let's talk about this word for a second, a defense. This is the word here we have in 1 Peter 3, 15. Always be prepared to make a defense. This word is a word pronounced, well, let's see here. Here's how we would say it in English. Apologia. And see, that looks like our word apology. But it means a reasonable explanation of why we are Christians. So all these people around us are hostile to Christianity. But we need to be ready to give an, a reasonable explanation of why we are Christians. And another word for it is, if you go down here again to verse 15, give a reason for the hope that is in you. Now, there is a whole class of literature starting in the second century, which is called the apologists, it comes from our word apologia, which means to give a reason or make a defense. Justin Martyr was a writer in Rome uh, in the late second century and he wrote two books called Apologies or Reasonable Explanations and he wrote to the emperor explaining what Christians are, what they believe and why they do what they do. This is what Peter is asking these people to be ready to do. But notice he says not only be ready to give that reasonable explanation or defense of why you are a Christian but notice how we're supposed to do it. He says, do it with gentleness and respect. See, while you're giving the answer to your faith, he says, let's don't do it with hatefulness. Let's don't do it reviling or disrespecting other people. Let's do it with gentleness and respect. And so they can see your good behavior. So in summary... This passage that we've looked at today is a passage about how Christians can come to be understood in a hostile environment that does not understand Christianity. And that is by two ways. Number one, by good conduct that everybody can see. Conduct that is good and helpful and respectable and according to God's word. Number two, by giving a reasonable explanation to people when they ask why you're a Christian, but doing it with gentleness and respect. I'm Dan Owen, and this is Passage Attack, and I hope you have a great day.